All right, well, it is 10.01, so I think we can officially kick this off. Hello again, everybody, and, and thanks for joining. Welcome to today's webinar titled Engaging Youth with the Built Environment. My name is Angela Vincent, and I will be moderating today's webinar. Our speaker is Maureen Ferry from House Stories, and she is joining us all the way from Qatar. And this is the first webinar of the newly created Sustainable Cities and Communities EE Pro group. And if you're not familiar, EE Pro is an online community of the North American Association for Environmental Education designed to connect environmental education professionals around the world. Anyone can join EE Pro, and by joining, you can gain access to job opportunities, webinars, online courses, discussion forums, and many more resources. So today we are going to explore how the built environment can be used as a framework for environmental education. House Story's mission is to engage K through 12 youth with the built environment through multi-sensory, hands-on learning powered by a unique curriculum. Collaborating with urban planners, systems engineers, geographers, architects, educators, and curriculum experts, they have designed a program called Urban Engineers a global journey for students to build adaptive and resilient cities. Today, we will be hearing from Maureen Ferry to learn about the framework and curriculum that turns students into urban engineers as they learn to apply systems thinking models to develop ideas and concepts about how lifestyles, infrastructures, and technologies need to be adapted for different geographies, resources, and climates. Again, please type your questions in the chat and we will leave 15 minutes at the end for discussion. And there will be a few pauses within the presentation where we will answer any burning questions. Now, we would like to hear from you. Please type into the chat your name, where you're tuning in from, and any other information you'd like to share about the grade level you teach or whether you're involved in informal or formal education. We'd love to, to see who's on the line. We'll pause a minute to have you enter into the chat. Yeah. So Paul. I just saw, I did see a question, sorry, from somebody about um, them uh, putting their camera. I don't, I think we are only the moderators and the panelists will be um, on video. Um, but if you'd like to make comments, uh, the chat is available for everyone to see. Thank you. So we have Paula Henson from LA, Jennifer from Austin, Texas, informal educator, mostly elementary and some middle school. We have Abby from Illinois, the executive director of the Environmental Education Associate of Illinois. I think we've exchanged emails, Abby. We have Laura from Global Green STEM in Colorado. We have Aaron. Another fellow Texan, informal educator, K through 12 and adults. Jane from St. Louis. We have Elise from Eastern Shore of Maryland. Awesome. So we've got a good mix of folks across the US. Any international folks on the line? Another one from Texas. Hello, Heather, mother of sixth grader. Great. Well, thanks so much for chiming in the chat. We really appreciate it. And again, my name is Angela Vincent, and I'm moderating today the webinar. I'm also the moderator of the Sustainable Cities and Communities CE program. And I want to give a special thanks to our speaker today, Maureen Ferry. She reached out on the EE Pro platform and it generated a lot of interest. And so we're very excited to, to bring this to you all today. Maureen Ferry is an architect and the creator of House Stories, a STEAM-based method for engaging youth with the built environment. Leveraging a background in international commercial construction, architecture, teaching, and adventure travel, she aims to inspire a fresh understanding of our habitats by providing a global hands-on tour of our 3D world. How Stories combines existing subjects in a new way and is scalable across age groups and product lines. Through building models, reading maps, 
plans and getting a little local flavor, curious minds engage proactively in interdisciplinary project-based learning, while at the same time deepening spatial thinking and global environmental awareness. Please help me give a warm virtual welcome to Mar Maureen. Thank you, um, and thanks everybody for joining, and thank you so much, Angela and AAEE for inviting me to um, be a part of this EE Pro group and this webinar. Um, so thanks for the introduction about myself. I think the only other thing I wanted to add was um, that um, we like to think uh, with our projects, we were trying to put sticks and bricks into context uh, through uh, product design and curriculum design. So keep that in mind as we go through the, um, as we go through this webinar. And uh, we really want to promote, through the work, promote empathy, 21st century learning, and systems thinking. So really briefly, the projects that uh, we do have are related to uh, the Junior Art Tech Studio, which are um, small hands-on kits of houses, about one to 20 to scale. And, um, and they're also aligned with K through 12 curricula. And we like use these to bring sustainability into the classroom. And they're a little bit less uh, open-ended and more uh, structured. Um, the Urban Engineers program, which we're looking at today, is um, a, a quest-based program that asks you, um, can you design an adaptive city, or how, how will your city adapt? Um, and it is geared for middle grades, so a little bit older. Um, it's open-ended uh, design or project-based learning with suggested parameters and aligned to K-12 curricula, which we're going to look at right now. And this, uh, we're going to bring sustainability and STEAM-based learning into the classroom. So when I spoke with Angela and other uh, folks at NAAEE, and I asked, well, um, how are the participants um, how, what might they be interested in learning? And one of the comments was, well, why would you use a city as an on-ramp for environmental education? And so I'd like to lead with that question. And, and I hope, I hope uh, you'll uh, agree with the answer. And um, secondly, uh, the question about how uh, using the city as a context enables the fusion of disciplines and cross-cutting ideas. And then what are the teaching frameworks that we found useful uh, in, our, in our group, our research group? And then finally, um, the environmental education content themes and where they fall within our curriculum. So, so here we go. Um, why use the design of cities and our built environment as an on-ramp to environmental education? So this is a picture of the um, sustainable goals from the UN. And um, obviously, number 11 fits squarely in our, in our, our field. Um, but all human activity is interacting with the natural environment. So um, if you're talking about industry, innovation, and infrastructure, uh, if you're talking about um, aff affordable and clean energy, clean water and sanitation, product life cycle and responsible consumption, and then ultimately, uh, all of these activities need land um, and so what is life on the land our human life and how is it impacting the natural life um, obviously that runoff and things have an impact on uh, the water below us clearly the plastic situation in our oceans that we're hearing a lot about is one thing but also polluted polluted uh, drinking water etc etc so all of these combined uh, combined to inform climate action um, which uh, really we believe is focused on our urban lifestyle. And, and so, um, so that's, that's that. Um, the second aspect uh, we wanted to talk about was about how using the city as context enables the fusion of disciplines and cross-cutting ideas. And um, here I'm showing you the house stories or urban engineers wheel. A um, particular example is the arid city, but um, we like to see the city as an intersection of natural, so climate, geography, and resources, and human environments, so density, mobility, and lifestyle. Those are all the things that we have a choice or that we, um, we can influence um, 
climate geography resources um, in, in, in many aspects they're given. But then when we're looking at the overlap with our cities in this, in this Venn diagram, um, there's a, a, a system going on that we need to take into account. So um, given that, you see that we are able to start overlapping, uh, uh, for example, climate, uh, climate science um, and uh, earth science. So um, next generation science standards. We're looking at physical geography, so the C3 framework. We're looking at human geography. That's the, um, also with the C3 framework. And as we start to build, I'm just showing a few, um, but I think you could probably think of a lot. Um, um, we can add in design thinking and engineering when we have to start to see how these systems interact to create and answer uh, or design responses to these situations. Um, and ultimately, you're um, promoting systems thinking. And through that wheel, we're able to sort of cross correlate the um, different standards that need to be met uh, in a K-12 setting. So how do we create this curriculum now that we know that everything is overlapping? Because uh, I think this is a challenge that a lot of people, especially in, in environmental education, uh, face. So um, our project team consisted of architects, urban planners, geographers, curriculum designers, educators, and systems engineers. And, um, and we first uh, found that the mission quest format from the Institute of Play, which is something um, you can look up online and is a, a great free resources for curriculum design. Um, we were really uh, captivated by their gaming and, and student-led learning approach uh, because we are trying to get kids to design. Obviously, we didn't want to um, have a closed uh, and finite, finite end. Um, but we wanted to get them engaged and, and, and having like a stake. So I feel like this format was really, really useful. Um, understanding by design, uh, the essential questions and enduring understandings uh, of this, of this um, curriculum framework or curriculum development framework are really um, valuable to um, develop the direction and obviously essential questions that we want children to be asking as they're going through the program. And you'll see those highlighted as they go through the curriculum. 21st century learning, there's a lot of ideas uh, talked about with 21st century learning, but what really captivated us was um, equipping youth uh, to solve future challenges. So there's a lot, a number of, a number of issues uh, convening there. If it's, if it's um, uh, communication, um, if it's knowing um, science or being able to uh, communicate and do science and also think about future challenges and be, uh, have empathy, things like that. Um, so that's another great resource. The NAAE guidelines for excellence, a similar uh, approach, the essential underpinnings of environmental literacy are a fabulous outline of where um, Environmental literacy has touch points in all of the um, standard K-12 curricula. So that's also at the NAAEE website. I encourage everyone to look at that fabulous resource. Uh, systems thinking is, um, like I said, this filter through which we want everyone to be, to be, um, to be doing their, their work and um, we want it to be part of their decision making. And then finally, uh, STEAM or STEM education, uh, we're engineer architect types, and obviously um, hands-on is a good thing. Maker ed, design thinking, and PBL are ways we feel that uh, kids uh, have a stake and, and can uh, intensify their learning. So this is just an example of what we're looking at when we say essential questions. Um, how does a city absorb, so to the, to the left of your screen, how does a city absorb or react to change? Uh, what kind of impacts will the actions of humans and um, have um, on their technology, et cetera? And so these are questions we can, we can always come back to and refine. Systems thinking here again, um, using it as a method to uh, a sort of pre-decision making to organize your questions and ideas, that's on the top 
right. And then on the bottom right, you see an example of the hands-on building design thinking. So these are sort of the elements that uh, we, we pulled from existing curricula that we wanted to uh, make sure we had available in our curriculum. So, uh, which EE content, uh, which environmental edu education content themes are relevant in this case um, when we're looking at the city? So, the, the themes that I'm going to look at, uh, just briefly go through, um, these themes were chosen based on the prevalence of broader reoccurring ideas uh, that we found during our product research. So, obviously, these areas overlap and um, and but these are how we found it useful to organize the products in this the educational products available this way obviously um given our filter uh someone else might look at it a little differently but we found it valuable so first the circular economy uh talking about product life cycles and uh, resource use environmental literacy meaning knowledge about earth phenomena and also the human impact um, ecological literacy, so concepts and knowledge about specific ecosystems. Um, climate literacy, climate phenomena and or agency in face of climate change. Design literacy and sustainable design. So uh, design practices, processes, uh, modeling uh, and modeling sustainable choices. Systems literacy, um, to demonstrate systems and concepts and then um, engineering and product design is uh, with all of the above. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully that's our intent. So um, that is the first explanation of how, how we, uh, of our research. And I'm going to ping it back to Angela. And we'd like to get some participation from, um, from, from our, uh, webinar attendees. Go ahead, Angela. Yes, if, if you can type into the chat, we're curious, which of these content themes are you most interested in or are most relevant to you? Circular economy, environmental literacy, climate literacy, design literacy, systems thinking, engineering. Yeah, so what we, what we found was uh, kind of back to the first question that I asked was, why would we use the city as an on-ramp? And um, through uncovering all of the, these different themes in environmental education, um, and then mapping them to our curriculum, which we'll show you after this question session, um, um, we reinforced the, the value of looking at the city as a, using the city as a framework. All right, so it's, we're off the board here. We've got, um, and bear in mind, some of the definitions that I just, I, I highlighted the definitions for you so that you understood um, how we were framing it, and that was based on our research of products or, I guess, educational tools that we found available either online or um, through games or through um, web-based applications or things like that. Um, and, and we found it, uh, this categorization is useful, but uh, here again, I just say qualifying it um, might be different for somebody else. So I'm, I guess I'm also curious to know, I have a question if anybody is also working on um, like climate adapted product design or um, because the buildings and infrastructure and the city are great, great places to start. So it'd be interesting to know who out there is um, working on those kinds of projects as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, Angela popped off for a minute, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going. So 
putting it in play. Um, so this is our curriculum and um, we have a urban engineer passport for the journey. Um, students embark on a global journey, creating teams and knowledge to build an adaptive and resilient city for a particular geographic location using the following format. So we have a five step process or a five phase, uh, a five phase process for, um, for classrooms to go on their quest. So your quest it designed a resilient city for a specific climate and geography. In this case, a tropical island, we're looking at the vertical garden city. So you are called upon by the citizens, I'm looking at the pink part on the top, you are called upon by the citizens of lush family of tropical islands. Um, and we break ground in two weeks, take care of your beautiful island, your friend Cho from the Starling family. And we have a game plan. So first, values. We are looking to situate the children in their own, um, something that they're familiar with and that they're comfortable with. So uh, what is important to me? What are my values? Uh, we have a series of exercises to help um, children uh, look through these uh, questions. What is a day in my life? What are my needs? Etc. So here's just an example of a student, simple student work, which is paper and uh, pencil and markers. Uh, what is a day in my life? To sort of start to think about mapping that out and seeing it as a process and a system. Uh, what are my needs? So um, using a simple framework like self to world, we call it. Um, how do we um, understand what our needs are and uh, where do we locate those needs within this, um, within this framework. Was it located from ourselves? Is it located in our community? Is it located from far away? And, and, and here we also want to introduce the idea of where is it coming spatially? So are there physical places or spaces? Um, if you think about, it could be love, it could be water, it could be um, any number of things. And what the beauty of it is that the students will, will obviously um, define what their own needs are and their own values. And that makes it, um, makes them very engaged and in, in, the, in the process. So the second, second phase is the big ideas. So um, let's talk about a place you live. I'm reading in the pink part there, um, or your habitat, uh, a city, is a concentration of humans living together, but what is its purpose? Um, whichever your answer, the city's success is achieving, uh, in achieving this outcome depends on a lot of different elements. Um, it's what we call a system. Huh, what does a city do? Is it kind of like an ecosystem? Okay, so, but taking on the city is actually quite a big challenge for anybody. So we are asking the children at first to the students to, um, map an ecosystem that they can go and test and see and touch and feel. So it can be their city, like this example I have on the left, or it can be, um, <clears throat> it can be a um, sort of an ecological area um, near, near your home or your school, um, something that um, people can observe. And then, and then based on that, uh, looking at that system or that map that you've drawn, we move them to um, using things like feedback loops and causal maps, collecting and clustering exercises. So very much in the um, sim systems, uh, systems, uh, systems mode um, to try to define challenges or problems or how, could I, how, can, I, how can I affect positive change or, or, or something like this. So, um, but here again, it's just situated in something that they're familiar with. And um, don't worry, says Cho. Here I'm reading in the, the pink part, my friend. Um, Cho, uh, we'll get through this together. Plus, there are no wrong answers. Just avoid using qualifiers, like too much, not, no, good, or bad. So other thing I forgot to mention is you can see, if you can see on the bottom of your screen, is um, where the themes that um, I spoke about in the first part of this webinar. So each of these exercises that we're going through in the urban engineers curriculum, uh, we've, we've tried to identify which of the themes 
they, they map to, and, and you can see that on the bottom of your, of your screen. Um, designing. So, um, using the urban engineer systems wheel, you're going to analyze the natural elements of your city and how uh, they can inform human driven elements. So, uh, what is life like on the island in this case? What can I do uh, so that my city can face these challenges or what might be these challenges? Here again, these are also these essential questions. Um, so designing, in, in about five to seven uh, class meetings, the students will uh, research human and natural context of their new city. Um, behind me is the printout of a map, so four foot by four foot. That is um, a map of, in this case, the, um, the tropical island, um, reminiscent of Singapore. Let's see, define big ideas, design products, and build. So designing. Climate. Climate. Research the climate of your location in our tropical island um, and speculate on how it impacts the way you live and how might you take advantage of these features. So um, in these little graphics that you see and the uh, bottom left side of the page are our um, story cards where we encourage kids to just jot, jot down little uh, ideas and concepts that they use as they keep working working through their design, keeping in their notebook, keeping on their, on their urban engineer's wheel. And um, in the pink part of this uh, page highlighted, you can see uh, resilient cities embrace technologies and ways of life that harness or work with the existing climate conditions rather than ignore them. So maybe collecting rainwater or covering your building with green to lower the urban heat island effect, things like this. Um, they have a, there's a lot of great engineering and design ideas that are rooted in, in this connection between your climate and, 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 and your habitat. Um, designing geography here, research the geography of your location right here uh, through the map and also through uh, web-based uh, research and things like that or in books uh, uh, or, or um, other resources that you might have at school. Um, get to know it better and think about the interplay between your location and how you live. Um, where would you begin the city? Where would you want uh, important places to be and how would it grow? Are there landmarks or um, do you want to take advantage of waterways? Things like this um, and just to, um, just to become familiar. Uh, resources and um, what resources will will you need in order to survive and thrive in, in your habitat? Uh, which resources are available and which are missing? So in our tropical island scenario, perhaps um, they don't have as much fresh water. They need to think about salination or something like this, uh, desalination. Um, or in this case, it's highlighted in pink uh, at the bottom of the uh, right side of the page. How do you grow your food without land? Well, there's vertical farming, perhaps, or hydroponics, um, which is uh, clearly a, 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 a future that we're looking at possibilities today. Um, and in general, um, just to have the kids look at uh, the resources that they'll need and where are they coming from, what are their inputs, and what are their outputs, and um, to start to think about this life cycle um, and is it a circular, a circular system or um, a linear system? And, and how, might they, how might they change or augment or think about inventing something to um, be mindful of the impact um, of the, either the resource use or the waste? Um, lifestyle. So, how is a day in the life of someone in your budding community? And now, um, now we're used, the kids can go back to the first part of the, um, of the passport where they were doing a day in the life of their own. But maybe instead of riding their bike to school, they get on a boat to go to school or um, 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 any, any, number of, any number of things. So uh, we ask them to think about like special traditions and culture and also um, what would their crew and their community hold. So this is also an opportunity for team building. 
uh, lifestyle again. Um, so when we found that combining the quest format with team based activities and hands on activities, the students spontaneous develop ideas about community and um, and that is really um, really great to be see them so engaged in in these um, decisions and ideas and creations um, when we're just giving them these few inputs uh, it's very exciting um, I'd like to show I'll show a little bit later here but um, again it's an opportunity to address broader social and behavioral change themes of the um, SDGs uh, which we'll look at again when we're looking at lifestyle um, and then how will these uh, decisions influence the values and big ideas of your city which we'll get to as well so um, mobility mobility uh, touches on issues of land use resource use access health air quality community and more so these are big decisions um, and you need to also have big ideas about what kind of mobility you like within your city and uh, one of the extracurricular activities that we encourage the students to do is highlighted in pink at the bottom of the screen is um, to uh, take a path less travel um, with an adult or family member spend a day exploring your hometown using a method you don't usually use a foot bike bus subway scooter so perhaps in a in a in a public transportation desert city you could encourage the kids to go out and ride their bike and pretend they don't have a car to go to work, what would they do, you know? And then I think this is how you, that you're able to encourage them to develop empathy and understanding of, um, or maybe it's very cold or uh, it's too cold to go, uh, to go on your bike, something like this. What are the solutions that you can provide for that? And it should, it should prompt and motivate um, new ideas and, and of course, um, empathy here. So this is just an example of a student um, to talking about encouraging students to develop prototypes. And I'm going to turn that on um, on pause. But this is just a, in, a, in a quick class, a student brought her, her science instructors uh, ideas about a maglev train. She brought it into our class when we talked about transportation and, and she wanted to make a quick prototype um, of, of a maglev train. And um, so obviously there's infinite possibilities to, um, to run with this and encourage the students to um, go deeper in these areas. Um, and that's very exciting to see. Um, density is uh, another element before we get to, uh, oh, this is actually our last, our last piece, I think. Um, density is an important factor uh, for determining land use, resource use and city character. Um, is it Houston or is it New York City? Obviously, we all recognize the difference in the feel, um, but how do you think about that quantitatively and how do you think about that qualitatively? Um, and uh, city making math is a, is a, is a, is a nice uh, way to kind of push uh, mathematics into uh, the city when you're talking about density or ratios and things like that. It's an interesting way to relate um, common math to a, a problem that we can see, obviously, um, how, how dense is it? How many people can we pack into a building? Um, um, so there we're making uh, math and, and some other elements very relevant. Um, some other elements I guess you can think about. Um, I'm sure um, um, uh, I'd love to hear them from you. So. Um, Looking at the bottom again of the page, how is density impacting our global footprint? And there's a lot of debate in, even in the urban planning world about um, how dense is too dense or how, what is the optimally designed city uh, density wise for resource and energy consumption. And um, this will be a, a discussion going on um, through the future. A lot of it has to do also with personal preference or uh, many kids I've worked with uh, haven't seen the super high rise uh, density cities of, of Asia, like Hong Kong or Shanghai. Um, um, and so these are things that are not so easy to relate to. And uh, obviously bringing these kinds of concepts to the students gives them a chance to you know, research, experience, build it and think about, oh, what is it like to be in an apartment um, or 
um, what it would be like to have less space, um, things like that. So, um, so these types of exercises are always exciting to uh, uh, hear what the students are, are learning. So this is really just a, a quick video to show you. Um, this was a very fast after school program of designing wind turbines. Um, each of these, um, this is the vertical garden city. So it's really just in progress. You can see there's numbers on these floor plates indicating the density. So how many units are there in each of these plates so the kids can stack them and design them and create spaces. Um, simple, these are printable and using skewers that are very inexpensive and there's no limit and obviously a lot of engagement um, from, from the students. And this actually was a very young group of kids. So when you, when you go with an older group of kids, there would be a lot, uh, probably a lot more sophistication. So, um, and then um, designing um, your city charter. So finally, um, what are your big ideas and guiding principles? So we've gone through the wheel on the right side of the page. We've gone through this wheel. You can see a photo um, here on, on the left of a student who, who was using her um, uh, symbols and story ideas, uh, story cards to um, identify her city and what was gonna be in her city. And um, depending on the level of your students, this can get um, much, more, much more lengthy or descriptive or um, detailed, um, but also even clearly with, with, a, with, with a younger audience, uh, I think they can, they can very much um, interact with this, um, with this uh, city wheel, urban engineer's wheel, and, and start to develop a goal or a vision statement. So. As a city, what values do you share? I'm reading from the pink part. Um, what big goals will you set out um, your city uh, to accomplish? Uh, write a city charter that includes big picture ideas as well as guiding principles. So here again, I'm just bringing this up because I mentioned that earlier. Um, when we think about environmental education in the context of the city, uh, and uh, we're using a systems lens. Um, I think um, it enables connections to more global social and behavioral values. Um, good health and well-being. I'm just indicating a few, but I feel that um, in general, oops, excuse me. Um, in general, um, I think we all intuitively understand that these things are interconnected and interrelated. And um, we are just uh, hope that through our projects, um, people can make more connections um, depending on what's important and what's, uh, what's their, uh, what their values are. So um, the, the fourth part of the curriculum is adaptation. So I'm reading from the pink part, nothing stays the same forever. Uh, the more challenges you tackle as a class, the more resilient your city grows. So, how will future generations continue to live on the island based on your actions today? And specifically, how will people 30 years from now be able to sustain themselves? So um, we're deal with this uh, using challenge cards. So again, it's this sort of idea about gaming. Um, and the, the challenge cards are intended to direct critical thinking by simulating real life complex issues and they need, and since they have a stake in what they've built on their map already, um, it's, it becomes, um, it becomes uh, a lot more, it becomes a lot, a lot more interesting. Um, it gives them a chance to put what they've learned uh, through the uh, steps one through three into practice and to also challenge their assumptions uh, about their big ideas and guiding principles. So uh, reading from the, the pink on the right side, our population is uh, expected, projected to double in the next 30 years. Can your city accommodate? So now the, cities ha the children have a vocabulary about density and high rise and low rise. Um, and um, uh, will changes need to be made to the city's design? And then uh, we give a few tools to go back. Uh, what are the affected areas? So I'm looking at the right side of this challenge card. Um, what are the affected areas, the design factors involved? 
uh, the leverage points and design actions. So, um, and here again, um, we encourage the kids to go back and look at the tools of change that we looked at in the, in the first and second part, the values of the big ideas. Um, how are your big ideas uh, and guiding principles holding up? Oops, excuse me. And um, how can you reflect on change and how to move forward? And um, finally, I think we believe that this is a, a, a thought model that people can use in, as a lifelong way of learning. So um, once perhaps you've done this model on a fictive location, it's going to be very interesting to apply it to your location. Um, and specific issues or challenges in your own location. And that's what we, what we hope, hope that students will take with them. Finally, your city story, because we are house stories. So we want to, to encourage the sharing and creating new stories and um, creativity in stories. So uh, a century has passed. Our city has seen its ups and downs and um, but stand strong, some parts more so than others. It's time to reflect on the lessons uh, learned and imagine ways people back on the main island, in this case, or your hometown, might benefit from them. So again, our essential questions and systems questions, uh, resilience, how does the city sustain itself for generations? Emergence, what kinds of impacts will the actions of humans and their technology have? and complex systems, um, how does a city absorb or react to change? Obviously, there's no answer, but uh, no definitive answer, but we want to encourage thought about this. This is just a, a, a video I put together, photographs of student work again. Um, but um, using uh, media of choice, create a presentation. This is going to depend on what's available in, in your community. Um, it can be a, a, a paper, a, a whiteboard presentation, or if you have access to AR, VR equipment, it could be something like this, or using ESRI story maps. I know they have a lot of great resources for educators that are, um, I believe they're not, they're inexpensive or free. Um, how have you designed your city to be resilient? And what is life like in, in your design city and how is it different from your life in your current home? So these are just ideas um, and, and we encourage that to be, um, to be part of um, the teachers uh, uh, determining you know, what, fits, what fits their um, the goals of, of, that, of that classroom. So those are the five uh, phases. And um, just to give an update, uh, we, we have pilots are progressing um, or they're, in on, they're ongoing or they're upcoming, upcoming in schools um, in Chicago and Houston and um, also here in the Middle East, um, running in fifth through sixth grade, mostly a science and social studies, um, working with an NGO in Zambia called Think Green Zambia to bring to a number of very uh, quite a few students um, in Zambia um, and also camps and workshops um, from botanical gardens, robotics, things like that. So a lot of the elements that we're looking at here can tie in with um, different focus areas. Um, so um, as I uh, just show, uh, so you have a visual of the different uh, projects, I wanted to thank everyone for participating. I have really enjoyed being part of the NAAEE community and I'm always um, surprised at the variety of geographic location of people and where, where people are uh, working formal and informal and different areas and it's really exciting to be, um, to be working with everyone that I've met at NAAEE. So thank you so much for coming. Um, Angela, um, has been a lot of fun to work with to develop this webinar. Um, Lee is also with NAAEE. Uh, I uh, worked with him about uh, to develop the workshop at the most recent uh, at the most recent conference, and I thank him for that and his interest. And also, of course, the the 
folks who developed the webinar, uh, the webinar staff, Maxwell, Arturo, and Colby. Thank you so much. Um, and I would just like to shout out to the design collaborators that have helped to put all of this together. Um, it's been two years working. So um, Natalie Coleman, uh, after the peanut, she's in Chicago. She's a teacher, um, a curriculum designer, also an administrator and runs STEM academies and has tons of energy and tons of great ideas. And uh, I really enjoy working with her. So check out her work and um, Urban Engineers, Quests and Product Research. I'd like to thank Allison Hu, uh, uh, an architect and geographer and urban planner and a participation studio, which is part of her group uh, based out of San Antonio. So I think that's, that's where all I, that's where I am. And I'm gonna hand it back to Angela. And it looks like we, we are on time, so. Yes, awesome, great job. Oh, we can't hear you. You can't hear oh. me? No, I can hear you, sorry. Okay, okay great. Yeah. Um, thank you, Maureen. Oh, we sorry, have, I didn't mean to do that. We have almost the full 15 minutes for questions, so please type them into the chat. Jody sent along a link to a YouTube video about Australia's underground cities, which is an example of an adaptation strategy. Basically, this community decided to build underground because it was so hot um, oh, wow. there in Australia. So thanks for, for sharing that, Jody. We had one question about some of the acronyms. Okay. Um, I, if there's any specific acronyms that we wanted to explain, please type them in the chat. Otherwise, we'll be sure to, in the, in the email with the recording to make sure that all of those are spelled out. NAAWE is the North American Association for Environmental Education. A couple of the other acronyms, NGSS, the Next Generation Science Standards. If there's any others that you can remember that you were, had questions about, please type them into the chat. And yeah. I'm not seeing any questions yet come through, but if anyone wants to type into the chat to answer any, either of these discussion questions, how is your city adapting to change due to climate or in other environmental factors? And how can students get, a, get involved with these efforts both in and outside of the classroom? One question is coming through from Laura. She says, I am working with K through 12 teachers on a green STEM project development in Guam. Mm -hmm. What thoughts do you have for students doing this who are on islands? Yeah, yeah. So, well, I, I think this is uh, obviously, um, so I, I guess the question is, are this for students that, that are doing a project are they living on the island? Can they observe? Can they, um, I think that's sort of the, the format can, can be, is designed to be used for them um, to go on um, their island and research what are the challenges, what are the problems, and how, how are the, what are the possible solutions for adaptation? So, um, yes, I mean, so yes, I think that, um, yeah, I think it could be used for a student on an island or a student on a desert as well. I think that it would help you uncover perhaps uh, with more clarity, what are the directions and the technologies or the passive design elements or things that need to be done to modify behavior so that, um, um, certain impacts are, are mitigated and um, their life is enhanced. So, I mean, I think a lot of islands, for example, I don't know if Fiji is, sorry, excuse me, Guam has, is, has a problem, but I know a lot of the islands in South uh, Pacific have, have um, trash problems. So this is, this is something um, where you could look at as well. For example, um, trash floating in the, in the in the, uh, in the waters. Um, obviously sea level rise is an issue and um, this is something that they need to, they need to grapple with and see how, 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 how they can adapt in their island. There's fresh water issues, something like that. 
Um, and, and then obviously you want to encourage leaders that can analyze the problem um, and think about change and think about the systems influencing um, that challenge or problem. Yeah. So, so I'd encourage you, if, if you want some help, please reach out and I'd love to work with you on that. Great, and we will send Maureen's contact information in the email with the recording as well. And let's see, she's off. Let's see, I just wanted to share the organization, Child in the City. They have a lot of info and resources. Thank you. Great. Let's see, Angela is off the video. So, did anybody, um, so one other uh, question or one other point of interest that I've received from, from teachers when I've talked about this program with them is, um, as a mean, using this type of analysis in their current uh, location, um, how can students get involved? This is the second question on the page. How can students get involved with uh, efforts in and out of the classroom? Um, so using some of these systems-based uh, exercises um, to help develop a service learning, service learning model. So um, some uh, schools have mandates to be working within their community to solve different problems, but the students are um, in charge of developing the program, identifying the issues, and, and developing a project to go in and implement. I've seen this with ECHO schools. It's, uh, it's a, a program based out of Northern Europe. And, um, and so uh, the, these questions that we're looking at in these are, 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 are perhaps going to be used in that kind of context as well. Are you on, Angela? I am. Um, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Technical difficulties. Um, I just posted okay. your, the link to House Stories in the chat so folks can for your website a little more in the meantime. Okay. And we have a few more minutes for questions. Okay, we can leave it, leave it open or? Yeah, we can leave it open for another minute or two before we sign off. Maxwell, I don't know if you were able to see any of the other questions when I, when my computer decided not to work. I'm not seeing any come up. Now I can't see the history in the chat for some reason. Yeah. Okay. Well, Maureen, if you want any close make any closing closing statements, yeah. go ahead and um Oh, yeah. Well, I guess just thank you. Thank you uh, again uh, to everybody. And um, I know actually there are a lot of acronyms and, and I, I was looking at the NAAE audience, perhaps there's some folks that aren't. Uh, I myself have had to acclimate to a lot of the a lot of the, the acronyms, but mostly we're looking at referencing uh, um, standards and in this case um, we're looking at the most recent national standards in the United States so next generation science standards C3 framework which is um, social studies and um, yes, as I mentioned NAAE also has their uh, a great reason how curriculum ties into all of these standards and um, yes so um, it's, it's, it looks kind of daunting, but, um, but, um, but it's uh, no worries. So um, I, I just, I also just said, I have, um, I have a, 
uh, I just have a link on this page. If, if anybody uh, sees this afterwards or is interested, uh, just a survey about um, your general interest, just to kind of get to know what, uh, where people are, are, are focused and, um, and, and what elements of the program you feel are valuable for, for your specific needs and uh, audiences. So uh, I welcome you to look at that if you have time. And um, yeah, so let's see, I'm reading one here. The way out of college admissions hell is video games. Please check it out as an exciting analogy for urban engineers program that is being developed for other uses. So, hey, um, that's a good, I like to end on that, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I, also, I would just say that uh, maybe after you have this, um, after you have uh, viewed this, um, webinar or um, had a chance to look at the materials, just the amount of news and um, information on a daily basis that is directly related to a lot of the items that we're talking about here. Um, I, I find that very, um, that was the, the intent of, the, of the, the program to be able to give a, a format and a framework to be able to tie in those issues and questions and um, mostly be able to empower children no matter what age to develop like a, 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 an opinion about it and, and be able to opine about it and to make a design choice about it and to think about how could it be better or different or improved. Um, so so that's, that's exciting. Um, that's been exciting. Uh, in the process. Great. Well, we can continue this discussion on the EE Pro platform. There's the link in the chat to the Sustainable Cities and Communities group. We'd love to continue the discussion there. If there's any other questions that you have for Maureen or want to get in touch with her, and we will be sure to send all this information out in an email. Thank you all for joining and taking time out of your day to discuss this topic. Thank you to Maureen for presenting today and for NAAWE for, for hosting us. And I hope you all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.